Ok, très bien. Donc, on s'est reparti pour le deuxième exposé de la matinée par Andréine, Pauline. Ok. Thank you. Oh, okay, I'll just talk, talk in, in English uh, and it's recorded? Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, yeah. Thank David and uh, Gabriel for inviting, for organizing this uh, this thing, for hosting us in here. Uh, so I, I, I slightly changed the title. I took Logically Reversible Reasoning. And so it's uh, going to be about uh, a version of uh, homotopy type theory called uh, directed type theory and at the end i'll talk philosophical significance uh <clears throat> yeah i assume some knowledge some basic knowledge of just usual type theory but i'll recall certain things but first thing so i'm going to talk about the uh, directed homotopy theory so it's uh, like in standard uh, uh, homotopy type theory we have a standard notion of homotopy behind it and here we have this notion of directed homotopy, which actually developed earlier and independently of type theory, that idea came later. Directed arithmetic operation is just a, a name, it's not several theory you'll see. But I'll stress this um, notion of uh, invertibility in, um, in mathematics, even in elementary mathematics, and try to argue that we kind of tend to remain blind to it, not to notice something which is very obvious. Then I uh, talk a little bit about properly directed type theory and uh, at the end, as I say, philosophical significance. So uh, directed type uh, homotopy theory idea is this. So we have some notion of space or rather we would more appropriately call space time probably where paths are not necessarily invertible, right? In the normal homotopy theory, we assume every path is invertible just even formally by inverting time interval. And that's issue also much discussed in physics. It's something I'm not going to talk here, right? Whether laws of nature at the fundamental level are in, uh, reversible or not. But fact is that when we use kind of usual mathematics, everything is invertible, right? We may uh, replace T by minus T and formally we revert the thing, right? And, and here is a theory that where it's not actually the case. So you may think about something like relativistic space-time with a black hole where you can go one way, but not the other way. And of course, many everyday situation. So that's the whole subject was started by Mark Grandius. I, I frankly, I don't know whether there were are other historical like predecessors and sources. I did not research that question, but Marco, uh, started from 90s and actually it was also not quite independent from say formal approach it was much earlier than homotopy type theory uh, yeah i remember in 90s there was a series of conferences called uh, formal topology and actually martin love who also attendant and many other people it was not focused on type theory that was just one of approaches and actually if you see into that book i show it starts you cannot really how say uh, uh, develop the theory without some elements of formal approach not too much formal but at least a little bit because that gives gives you language yeah and now it's a already more than 10 years. It's published Cambridge University Press. It's very, very systematic. I recommend to everyone this book. Uh, uh, right, that I saw. Here is elementary example, which uh, demonstrate that it's, say, not trivial. So the idea is we introduce uh, artificially a kind of order. It's just Cartesian usual plane, right? And we make a kind of a future cone, like in special relativity. The idea is that uh, here is this condition, right? That we, yeah, here it is. The, we allow that uh, first thing, we it should be increasing in the sense of, well, uh, yeah, it's a path. The path is a map from interval to space, right? Right, so we re, uh, kind of require that it is increasing. And here we introduce this order 
you see it's not symmetric. So we have, we have a module here, which means you can move to the right and up and down, but not too far with um, a limited speed, if you like, right? So your speed is uh, maximum one. You can have, so, so simple model of that, right? You have kind of a flow, uh, right? And then I'm going to introduce kind of obstacles in the flow, which actually uh, limited in time, right? You, you, you may imagine a water, whatever, moving, but then you have a obstacle which come up, come pops up and then disappears after a certain time. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, so far, major application is in uh, what's called uh, concurrence uh, computing. Something I don't know much, but the idea that on the same machine you have multiple processes, so multiple computations should share the same resources and, and not clash between each other. So you may think about uh, uh, <clears throat> this popping up things as a kind of obstacle created by some other computation than that main computation you try to modelize here. But also you may just, just as an elementary example. And what is interesting that you have two say spaces X and Y, right? Which from point of view, normal homotopy theory are the same. They are homotopical, of course, right? But, but here, if we introduce this notion of paths, which is a little bit special and it's special, actually it cannot go back. It cannot make a loop, right? Then just moving a little bit, <laughs> these obstacles, you have different kind of homotopy classes, right? So here, uh, you 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 may have that kind of loop and and here not you cannot be because here you would need to kind of go back in time and that is uh, forbidden by our that that just example the simplest model of how this uh, directed um, space may look like but but it's also very intuitive even without such model the model rather serves to show that there is something non trivial and the interesting thing that i'm going is that you cannot make actually fundamental group in such a space right and uh, so if uh, what naturally generalizes fundamental group would be something like fundamental monoid right without inverse operation but uh, they are all trivial here of course right because you cannot have really monoid you cannot uh, make a loop. So what is going, just a little bit going ahead, it's fundamental category, which is going to take place of a uh, uh, group or groupoid. All right, but that's I'll say. But now I just come to very simple, this uh, uh, example uh, due to Immanuel Kant, of course. <laughs> Everybody knows. So we convincingly in that and similar example, writing equal, right? Two, five, two plus two equals four. But but why actually we are saying equal, right? Because if you look, of course, this operation is not invertible in the sense that, okay, if you have this map from pairs of numbers to numbers, you don't, it's it's map which is not invertible, obviously, right? Because, right, it's not uh, injective, say. You have a lot of very obvious and not invertible. So actually, yeah, they say this uh, 12 cannot remember where it came from. Even if you say it's sum of two numbers, it's not unique uh, solution, seven and five, obviously. Right, and, and actually interesting why we still use equal. Right, which suggests symmetry anyway. But in homotopy theory, we do that. I mean, I mean, if you have n plus n, right. m plus n, for instance, on negativity, uh, we, we write it's, rever it's reversible, it's complete. Any computation is reversible. You have a propositional quality. No, look, uh, what do you mean, irreversible? It's, it's a function, it's not reversible. I, I want to normally we don't look at this, function, but I, I won't say it's a function, right. From pair of numbers to numbers. But in the type of natural numbers, if I right. say two plus three equals five, mm -hmm. this is a, mm -hmm. propo a propositional equality. Right. So in the homotopic semantics, it's a path that is reversible. Yeah, but, but what, what I'm going to say is kind of wrong semantics, even for, for very simple cases like that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly the point. Because because yeah, what we yeah. do, it's, it's actually because we truncate it to proposition level. That's why that happened. Okay. I... In propositional levels, actually, in a sense, 
it, it does matter, at least a normal uh, homotopy type theory, right? It simply does matter. You, you're only looking it's uh, empty or not empty. And that's it. Right, and then you say everything reversible, but it, that does make sense. It, uh, saying it's reversible, it's purely for formal reason you are saying that's reversible, but there is no kind of good reason to say, you know. Well, it's related. Yeah, yeah, I know, of course. Quality is symmetric. Right, <laughs> but exactly what's actually I'm going to say that you should write equality there. You should write an error that, that would be better notation but of course we may ask yeah, why to make okay with what I know. <laughs> yeah yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. no uh, i exactly agree <laughs> but that's what i criticize right yeah, yeah. And, and even without homotype even i don't know in school education why we should uh teach kids <laughs> to, to write equality there when quite obviously we have kind of you know <laughs> A kind of operation, right? Which uh, start with something and brings us somewhere, mm -hmm. and which is directed mm -hmm. by its uh, character and even formally, right? But but that's true. That's true. That uh, we do that, and one explanation is kind of elementary algebra, right? We can shuffle things and then obtain say more formulas from given formula just by rule of algebra in uh, algorithmic sense. <laughs> Right. And um, right, the same we, we we are writing in school these things, then the, the true thing it would be like that. And yeah, that, that's interesting. Actually, I never um, tried to study it, but but kind of moral of this elementary example, I would say, okay, one it's kind of reveals that there is uh, this irreversible phenomena even in uh, you know elementary arithmetic but on the other hand it also shows that we have kind of uh, optics which uh, suppresses that right which symmetrizes I would say artificially okay eternalize in a sense I, I was thinking that was in a seminar you know this inedible numbers of uh, of uh, unwritten uh, doctrine of Plato reported in uh, uh, in um, a book uh, new of Aristotle, it's a so it's ideas that things are internal that, that really when we kind of making addition, it's kind of uh, you know a confusing way and and real way to think that they should be internal. So you should ultimately probably look at uh, this example is just a, a ternary relation about three numbers seven five and twelve and just forget about operation or any, anything like that that would be yeah and also interesting uh philosophical historical question that i know don't know the answer where it actually comes from this uh, tradition right whether it was all the time uh of course this kind of computing is uh, dates back to you know traditional cultures, whatever, and uh, here in Sphere, I think it's a very good place to ask these questions because there is uh, probably best e experts in the world about that and uh, whether we really find everywhere this idea that things are symmetric when we, say, add two numbers, which that, that would be... Do you prefer questions at the end? Or no, no. You... Please, please, go ahead. Because when, when I, I heard about this directed homotopy theory, I think that it was the analogy was, well, we have the theory of infinity groupoids, yeah. the reversible arrows, yeah. and now we are embedding these in infinity categories. Yeah, okay. that's so what we want. an extension of what we know. Yeah. But what you are saying is not an extension. You are saying, in fact, the reversible thing that we are no, yeah, yeah, that, that's how I come to that. that so yeah, that's what I'm what travels. Yeah, 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 but but that's uh, I would say the, the, the game because uh, one that's a very simple idea that we want to extend. We are extending, it, it doesn't work, it, it's, it's, it's not like for that. For the yeah, yeah, but but that's a general idea, of course, of course, it is right. But then it comes uh, as usual, I think, in, in cases like that, that we should also revise. Kind of foundations in, uh, okay. in the center. We cannot just extend conservatively, okay. peacefully. That that's <laughs> kind of strong thing to to revise. And and even there are actually other um, reasons to think that arithmetic in uh, hot is a uh, kind of trivially too trivially uh, formalized. Okay, exactly. Thank but you. but okay, okay. For your question, uh, for a long time, uh, people would uh, use the idea that uh, you have a certain operation, mm -hmm. and it gives 
Right, and that produce is not something you can. But then, then the but they will consider that it's uh, reversible, not because uh, it's the same idea between equality, because equality is not an identity. Equality is the fact that what what is reversible is the amount. Yeah, but look here. Here is the important point because if you just say okay, I have a. Uh, Seven plus five equal twelve is something uniquely defined for seven and five. It just kind of you have I don't know seven uh, bricks and five bricks, and in that sense, okay, I can put everything back. But if and actually, I think it corresponds to what Kant wanted, right? Because he wanted it's a general rule. It's not just for this number. And if you make it into general rule, it's certainly not reversible, just in simple sense. You you, you cannot. For every given number, right, to give a pair of uh, summons, how do you say? Because there are many ways to do that. So, so you see, so if you just look in single operation, you have this idea: why not? I can just go there and back. It's uh, it's all invertible, kind of in space. I don't know, but 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 as a general rule, okay. it's not. I was telling you is that when people were talking about equality, they are not talking about this. They are talking about the amount, a quantity. Okay. They are not talking about the operation. You're talking about the operation. Yeah. So if I take two inputs, I have an output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Process, yeah. Right? That's also interesting, right? right? So you have kind of idea that I got one number seven plus five and another number twelve already there, and they yeah, said, right. And your quantities are also. right. But we'll come back because it's actually interesting. It's also when we come to higher categories. There was all this discussion, again, going a little bit ahead of my slides, about how to construct them. And uh, there was uh, issue of different shapes. And actually, homotopy theory, it's a kind of uh, forced people to uh, prefer one particular shape, which is called globular. And actually, it's, by the way, more or less. Uh, but, but there are other approaches. And that approach is what's called opitopes, right? When you're just saying, uh, a plus B, whatever, times B, arrow or something, right? And globular is a little bit different, which uh, admits for this homotopic interpretation. I'll show that a little bit later, more detail, okay? Okay, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead. Now I just uh, remind of uh, what is the fundamental group, I think everybody knows, right? Uh, no, of topological space. You take a point, you take uh, all loops uh, up to homotopy to that point, you compose the loops, and by the way, to compose them, you should take them up to homotopy because there is no unique composition defined uh, otherwise. Uh, right, and then actually it's a theorem, I mean, it's back to Poincaré and uh, analysis situs that it actually does not depend on your base point. No, with some conditions, right? So it's actually invariant of topological space. Uh, now, in uh, you may, this category say, okay, say, I don't want just loops, I want all paths. And before homotopy type theory, that would be completely ineffective in a sense, you can say that, right? But you can't compute with that. And uh, what actually homotopy type theory showed, and that's of course a kind of new light that you can compute. Right, not only with uh, groups, but also with uh, groupoids, which was kind of unexpected. That's that just example of, uh, uh, right. And that's uh, fundamental groups is about just paths, right? And then if you, instead of saying paths are homotopic or not homotopic, you look kind of individual homotopies, right? Up to next homotopy. And that, it's not called fundamental, Group, it's called actually in, in normal, it's it, it simply called uh, uh, topological group, higher topological groups. Okay. Uh, right. And uh, no example is a hop vibration, for example, right? For, for sphere S3. And, and, and so also we have, and the same we have in groupoids. Uh, and groupoids is a little bit different because actually higher topological groups are still groups. You don't need kind of two groups or anything, right? And 
uh, in groupoid, we have this uh, two-level groupoid. So it's a new also algebraic object, if you like. Uh, right, and uh, yeah, that's this opitopic shape, uh, more or less intuitively. And that's a shape used in uh, uh, all this um, homotopical interpretation, which, right, that's more or less like David just said, like in Renaissance. So we assume that somehow there is, exists that number, and then there is a, whatever, a number, but that time, instead of saying they're equal, we are saying they're equivalent, or even it's a more general case when we just have some two morphism between these things, but not in that way. That, by the way, also very interesting theory, but it doesn't have such nice interpretation, anything uh, geometrical. Okay. Uh, Right, and uh, uh, that just for saying why that um, directed type theory is kind of attractive from uh, a foundation point of view, because of course there was around that project that categories should somehow replace sets, which um, in a sense theoretical, so Lavia pushed that really. And on the other hand, it's kind of practical, right? Because that's what really mathematician used was uh, seem to be effective. And then and if you make a foundation with the standard hot, like univalent foundations of Wawelski, right? But then it turns out that you, you kind of realize that project, but only partially, right? You, you favor for some technical or whatever reason, uh, group poets. So it, there is no general category theory. And of course, you, uh, yeah, which is kind of strange. You may okay think as like that. I remember I talked with Ray Wozniak. Say okay, I, I was trying making category theory in foundation doesn't work. But then I said, look, uh, with the uh, groupoids it works. <laughs> so let's do groupoids, which is not a principal reason, right? And uh, leaves some dissatisfaction. And also, actually, in a standard court, uh, for example, uh, it's so-called equivalence principle. So you can make rigorously this idea that isomorphic set level structures are mm, the same. So with, with univalence axiom, you're more or less making that rigorous, right? Uh, but uh, you can do the same with equivalence of categories. You know? It does not generalize. In standard code, it only works for a particular uh, class of categories called univalence. So it, it does not just simply generalize to to category theory, like to next level. So uh, yeah, so the idea that if after all you kind of invent something similar, but not for uh, for groupoids, but for general categories, and uh, categories mean higher categories. Yeah? That's of course very attractive um, idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what, what I say. So now I uh, try to show some elements of uh, more formal semantic and syntax, which I should probably say uh, in historical note is not really achieved. So today it does not exist as a stable version. Okay, in hot we also have a lot of things like cubicle, da, 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 da. may more or less, there is, we may say, more or less stable core, even probably some people would not agree. But here there is no stable core so far at all. It's actually, the idea is not new. There was a talk by Michael Warren uh, back in uh, 2013, so it was during this uh, uh, homotopy type year they called it right uh, that he gives that talk uh yeah but but, but more recently actually people uh, produced quite quite a lot uh, for there was this um, every annually uh, meetings uh from Otopi type theory I mean, probably you looked it's it's all i'm not sure it's recorded but at least it's all in the internet and uh, this is sourced on uh, altenkirch I think he's one of the, I'll say, at least he likes philosophy and he likes to uh, talk about things philosophically. And uh, he, this is his student, uh, Neumann. And uh, that just the, that year, and they also produced short paper. It's actually not even an archive, but 
openly available and then you you have a kind of full bibliography the version i'm going to use it's actually due to page north who made a talk was in Ecole Polytechnique here and also he has or she has an older paper of 2018 uh, which actually i use here but but just for saying that's not settled it's just rather how it may work and here it's interesting that uh, it's um mm, is going to be a little bit about modalities just general idea again so we are going to interpret types as uh, spaces but that time directed spaces with this uh, mm, uh, directed uh, homotopy theory and high groupoids are going to be replaced by higher categories and identity types including high identity types are going they're called home types, like home sets, right? So we have uh, just sets of morphism instead of, uh, uh, right. And now some motivation. Remember what is home function, right? We, we are taking category, whatever category, we pick up one object, right? We kind of fix object. And for example, we're looking for all, for set of all uh, morphisms, uh, stacking with that object, right? Having its a core domain. Of course, category should be what's called locally small, that it's uh, otherwise it's not a set. And uh, every object of C we just send into that set of those morphism, right? And uh, that functor is covariant. Okay? It's it's easy to show, but okay, it's covariant. On the other hand, if we just switch the place here right of uh, if we uh, fix object on the second place as a domain that subject is contrary or we may say it is a general by functor right is covariant by first variable contravariant by second variable, and that motivates what we should do in um uh, in a directed type theory because what we want that's I just added during Hugo's talk that it's a modality. Uh, so we should somehow, you know, make it uh, into syntax, right? To, to, into specification, which is covariant, which is covariant. So that's idea here. It's uh, to give uh, to types what is called polarity. Other, other people call it variance. Uh, and which is a modality, just in the sense that just Hugo talked. So here it's formation rule. Whenever we have a type, we have this opposite type. So the idea that if A is a category, it just reverses all errors, but again, kind of high category, but you may just think about flat categories. And then second modality was <clears throat> uh, what uh, Page not uh, calls a core, means uh, kind of subcategory, of uh, which is a group word, right? We just pick up all uh, mm, all um, mm, those morphisms which are reversible in our given category. By the way, it's this functor from core to category is always faithful, right? Because every object has identity morphism and that makes it invertible, uh, uh, right? Mm. Right, and then that I, I actually change a little bit her notation, but otherwise it's just the same. Uh, so if we have a, a term of this, uh, which belongs to this course or something reversible, uh, uh, right, then there is kind of corresponding, uh, corresponding term in uh, our in A, it's all, all formation, uh, the same for, Contravariant, and then we have a right. These are kind of uh, she calls these things functions, which kind of connect uh, a a core and uh, a op. Okay, and here is a formation rule. That's that's interesting. So that's uh, yeah. Here again, I change notation. Probably it's not the best my choice, but I I, I call this type with an error, right? So that that means type of uh, morphism from X to Y in type A, in category A, if you like, okay? Yeah, and here you see we take a domain in uh, A op, 
because remember uh, home functor is contravariant by first mm -hmm. variable and we take uh, the, the the domain why we take just for from a because it's covariant and, and and here we introduce we use the reflection term by the way it's very much like here at that point in the uh, usual um, hot and usual chromotopy type theory so we um, uh, we pick up uh, this reflection term, which is basically here the same. No, except we also think about this reflection as uh, not necessarily invertible, right? So we take x op, uh, just x, uh, but we start with the idea that this um, a core is inhibited, which is true in uh, normal category theory because we always have this uh, identity morphism, which is invertible. Yeah. Right, right, and here I just it's um, uh, to compare. That is usual elimination rule. People call it J rule. I don't know why where this J comes from. In the standard homotopy type theory, I think David discussed in this talk. So yeah, but but the idea, the interpretation of that. I'm sorry, it's uh, what people call transport. So we have. Uh, I'm sorry. I, just my slides is a little bit down. So we have uh, on the basis this uh, uh, path from say A uh, in the underlying uh, type A, we have uh, something from X to Y, we have a path. And uh, here we have, uh, we may, if it's a uh, first level, uh, propositional level, we may would call it property, like a predicate P of X, right? And if it's a higher homotopical level, we would call it structure or something, right? And uh, and then this elimination rule tells us that there is this transport. So we may, it's like indiscernibility, uh, no, yes, uh, indiscernibility of identicals, right? So we have X is identical to Y, and then we have the same property, P of X and also P of Y, and so, here we construct this J term just from reflection, right? So reflection should be given. And then this elimination makes us that we construct this uh, uh, transport of this property or structure along this path. That's how it works in a standard. And uh, here we actually have two notions. We, we have two notion of transport because we may transport forward Right, the same way. So from X to Y, uh, we may call it prediction if you can think about intuitively as a time. Uh, it, but we may also have this backward uh, transport, like we uh, look back from Y to X, and so we have this retrodiction. And correspondently, we have two rules, a left, uh, right, and left. Uh, uh, yeah, and what is actually important here is it's a little bit more complicated here syntax, but what she does, she takes this core, okay, first, and then she introduces kind of intermediate structure. She calls it theta, right? Then she has uh, evidence from theta, this little theta, and then she uses it to, to make this another structure, which we are going to transport. C, you see, and she does it right and left. Okay, that's uh, more or less clear. Probably, if you want, I can come back to these pieces of syntax. But what what is important actually, and what is point of critique of uh, Alterich and uh, some other people because they uh, they argue that that's you see this intermediate structure uh, is actually kind of classical. Right, it's not uh, it's not directed itself, and that makes, for example, uh, uh, among other things, that if you iterate the construction, right, because other interest is to to look for higher homotopy types, like for higher identity types, and then actually it does not bring to in fin categories, but only in one, which is already not bad, of course, which means that uh, all uh, morphism after 
level one, they all invertible, and that feature was the thing. And actually, what uh, Alteric Norman proposed that you should also do something about contacts. You see, here uh, you have this piece of contacts, which of course crucial. That's notion of type dependency, and and she takes it classically. <laughs> so she introduced this. Uh, uh, modality kind of on the top of uh, invertible theory. So in that sense, it's not deep enough. And uh, okay, I will not and uh, source. And actually also Michael Warren already thought about something else. So the argument you need uh, to revise also your notion of dependency in types, which would imply kind of modality of contacts or probably you should call it modality. But that would be some different uh, solution, okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. Probably I just uh, I, I say yeah, here I'm going to talk dogmatically because I have no time. I think just uh, kind of slogans to <laughs> to excite people. So one, uh, three points, three philosophical significance. One, actually, it's about general categories here. I published in uh, 2011 that paper. Categories without structures, where I kind of try to go against the consensus that category theory supports uh, structuralism, kind of obviously. And my argument, of course, that depends what you call structure. You know, you know kind of, uh, call structure sounds in different things, but I, I think at least if we look at McLean, people like that, right? There was this intuition, something invariant. So you have all this, uh, is something in spirit of say Rwandan program. Of Klein, right? You have uh, transformations and kind of invariant which uh, survives through all this transformation. And simple argument that it only makes sense for in invertible transformation, right? If you just think about general, even this usual talk, we are saying that's morphism preserves structure, but it's it's very much misleading because there are many. You know, I don't know. You take a a group. And uh, it's always would be homomorphism into trivial group, in which sense it preserves the structure. It it forgets it's completely just like an arithmetical example. So it's a, in a sense, it's a way to think about general morphism as if they were isomorphism in a sense. And historically, I think it's interesting point because uh, actually it took time to you know, people, I think Jordan was uh, important in this story, to recognize, to make difference between isomorphism and general morphism. But I think there is this kind of um, conservative trend to uh, continue to think about even general morphism as if they were isomorphism. And I try to suggest that all this stuff about structuralism, it's about that. And so if you really want to see in category theory something really new and interesting, you should forget that uh, structuralism, it does mean that you should come back to kind of essentialism, so of course not, but should be kind of post-structuralism or something, something, something different. And that is a kind of controversial and point, but dogmatically, I would say that that's idea that uh, structuralism somehow comes well, with the uh, category theory is wrong. And uh, the fact that, of course, uh, standard homotopy theory kind of gave additional support to that idea because it privileged uh, it privileged um, groupoids, right? Uh, rather than general categories, but that's exactly what we may try to change. Even, okay, that's a little bit visual thinking I'm talking about, right? It's not yet quite achieved, but there is no principle, uh, you know, difficulty. There is no principle, uh, again, in my view, as far as I can see, uh, obstacle to do that, right? It's rather that it's simply not done, and but in my view, that's the way to go. Uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, probably first point. Second point. Philosophically, it's uh, that homotopy type theory, not as the first, say, after topos theory, gave a lot of uh, inspiration to rethink relationship between, say, logic and geometry generally, right? That was very much inspiration of Levere. So rather than thinking that logic is kind of uh, 
basis for geometry in itself, it does not relate any, you know, geometrical or spatial or temporal notion, uh, something like we have in project like uh, Hilbert's, right? So we put logic and uh, actually made very explicitly by Tarski, for example, in his book on uh, uh, deductive sciences. He has this old philosophical book first written in Polish, I think, then in German, then in English, where he said, okay, we should put logic first and then build on logic something, right? Rather than that, the theory and then uh, homotopy type theory suggests that logic somehow part of uh, Geometry, right? It's like here. Okay, it's uh, it's all for long discussion, and uh, but as a matter of slogan, I would say uh, right. And and the directed type theory just goes further, and it introduces, I would say, more interestingly, this temporal direction, right? This, yeah, probably in the sense that was the vision of Brouwer that logic is just a part of mathematics and mathematics is based on intuition of time. I'm not at all a follower of Brouwer, but in that particular thing, I think he was right. <laughs> right, and so I would say received notion of logic as a set of high temporal, as special fundamental principle of thought and reasoning, which has been promoted in 20th century by uh, Frege and Russell is a kind of platonic prejudice. So we, we should uh, embrace uh, space and time and logic more seriously. And that's what's actually Lavier said. And he was inspired by Hegel, by his uh, already Hegel was also mentioned by Hugo <laughs> today, uh, as uh, what Hegel called objective logic versus subjective version. Of course, uh, it's a big issue. It's uh, all this exegesis of Hegel that is big enterprise. But I would just remark that, of course, uh, people doing analytic philosophy say that they won't say logic. They do think about logic objectively, but as a basis of this objectivity, they take language, right? And that's the idea that language somehow reflects something deep about uh, being. That's idea back to Aristotle and Visquine, it's kind of survived. And I would say, okay, the, in a sense, that is a good idea, but language by itself is not a good, uh, uh, how to say, uh, piece, <laughs> uh, not a good way because we have science. With, with, with rubbish, we should be more, more serious about, uh, about science, right? What science is that our best, uh, and science also not only of uh, say cosmology or something, general relativity, but also about human brain, right? And that's here that we should uh, find kind of uh, objective uh, foundation of logic. And that's, and here actually mathematics comes as a very, as an instrument of science, right? Uh, so, and so I rather sympathetic to this idea of objective logic. Uh, right, and uh, as such, objective logic should not be detached from uh, space and time. Okay, very dogmatically. And finally, what I gave a talk in Leon, it's uh, kind of interestingly uh, how they think about these issues of identity, right? Because if we just look at this uh, directed type theory straightforwardly, it looks like it uh, simply replaces identity types with. Uh, homotopy type. So every morphism is an identity. And some people I really, and they actually page you know, don't accept that. They say, no, no, no. We should, for example, just uh, distinguish this uh, reversible morphism and call them identities, but not general. But I think it's at least uh, intuitive and interesting to, to think about uh, uh, all morphisms, identities in a sense, right? And uh, then we have a relation. If we truncate it down to relation, it's relation which is reflexive, is a transitive, but not symmetric, right? And we have some form of indiscernibility of identicals, which of course we should qualify, right? Uh, uh, with this notion of transport. Not sharing. The slide. Not sharing. We are not, I mean, we are not seeing what the... Oh. App. Sorry. Uh, sorry once again for technical. Uh... Okay. Now that. 
Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Now, uh, for some reason. It doesn't matter, but okay, yeah, yeah, right. You're finished. Yeah, yeah, I, I almost finished. Uh, well, all right, right, and uh, no, what what is interesting straightforwardly, of course, it's kind of naively, but it's uh, simply uh, straightforwardly allows you to talk seriously about identity through time, in in the sense as a primitive here. We should not explain identity through time in terms of kind of atemporal identities, it's usually done in this uh, works of analytic metaphysics, but we may rather start, and I kind of hope, because there is a no, lot of uh, talks on identity in biology, fusion, fusion of cells, and uh, so all in social science, people talk a lot about like, you know, ethnic, whatever, cultural identities, and, and, of, and all that absolutely out of reach of any Logical, I did standardly speaking, but that's uh, I think it's uh, flexible enough to kind of formalize that kind of talk, you know. Uh, right, that's uh, Tazel's sheep. It's, it's nothing wrong about the idea that, say, this initial sheep is uh, identical to both of these, but in identical is not symmetric way, right? But these are different, so why not? And uh, okay, that, that's the end. <laughs> and I uh, have. Euh, donc on a un petit peu de temps pour discuter, pas tant que ça parce qu'il est 11h50 mmh. euh, et qu'on doit aller déjeuner pas trop tard. Donc je ne sais pas s'il y a des questions, questions in the Zoom or in the room. Moi je peux commencer, euh, je serais intéressé de savoir la réaction à Lyon de gens comme Jean Batichonnet parce que l'idée d'introduire le temps dans la logique, c'est l'idée que j'entends depuis 20 ans auprès mmh. des partisans de la logique linéaire. C'est-à-dire ouais. c'est leur slogan numéro un. Mmh, mmh, mmh. Si je consomme une variable, je n'ai plus le droit de revenir en arrière. Mmh. Ouais, elle ouais. est consommée. Et si je la rappelle, c'est une mmh. nouvelle variable. Et, euh, et, je, et, et je l'utilise ça dans les règles de la logique elle-même. Donc, mmh. euh, j'ai l'impression que c'est un slogan qui est déjà assez ancien. Et on a vu avec Hugo qu'en fait, on a des traductions maintenant de la logique linéaire dans, euh, dans la théorie des catégories et dans Roth. Mm -hmm. Donc ça, c'est intéressant parce que mm -hmm. ça montrerait, tu vois, on rejoint la discussion qu'on a commencé à avoir avec Hugo. Il y a quand même deux questions qui sont assez différentes. La question est de savoir, est-ce que c'est du vocabulaire C'est important, tu vois. Est-ce que le fait de parler en termes de temps, c'est du vocabulaire ou non est-ce que c'est vraiment, réellement inscrit dans l'ontologie avec laquelle on travaille Et moi, je suis toujours un petit peu euh, perturbé parce que euh, à partir du moment, si on n'a pas d'équivalence, on est juste en train de créer un nouveau système qui est complètement différent. Et là, il faut dire ce qu'il fait, tu vois, ce système par rapport au système existant. C'est-à-dire qu'il ne peut pas être comme ça. C'est un peu ce que tu as répondu à Gabriel, il doit être ailleurs, il doit être, il doit être autre chose. Et, mais là, on est embêté parce qu'on n'a pas de dialogue. Et dès qu'on a un dialogue, il est possible qu'on arrive à simuler un système dans l'autre. Et à ce moment-là, on sait qu'ils sont équivalents. Donc ça, c'est un truc, c'est un vrai problème philosophique général, si tu veux, de savoir dans quelle mesure on est en train de reformuler les mêmes choses dans un autre vocabulaire ou si c'est vraiment différent. Et mais donc, mais pas évident, oui, mais je dirais, je ne sais pas si tu sais quelqu'un a déjà lié cette... Euh, tu aurais dû diriger euh, logique linéaire. C'est pour ça que je te pose la question, ouais, comme tu l'as présenté. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Pourquoi il faut le faire ben, Parce que dans les cas standards, quand même, bon, tu peux donner sémantique, mais... Quand est, tout est irréversible, ça, toute la base des théoriques est tout est invertible, donc peut-être ça ne colle pas bien avec les, cette idée de logique linéaire. Bon, peut-être on peut espoir. Mais cette théorie, comme je dis, il y a encore euh, difficulté dans. Non, mais ça, ce n'est pas sûr, parce que tu vois, en mmh. fait, mmh. c'est là où il y a vraiment, il faut qu'on réfléchisse philosophiquement sur ces questions. Mmh. La raison pour laquelle la logique linéaire, elle peut être simulée dans une logique qui n'est pas linéaire, mmh. c'est parce qu'elle a une structure algébrique. C'est exactement ce que nous a expliqué Hugo. Quand tu as une structure algébrique, en fait, que tu peux formuler avec des monades, des algèbres, des choses comme mmh. ça, en fait, le, la partie euh, irréversible, 
elle est capturée entièrement dans l'algébrique et à ce moment-là, tu peux la retraduire. Et euh, Attends, donc, mais c'est pourquoi ça. algébrique, c'est réversible pour toi Algèbre, tout bien irréversible. Bah, c'est toute la question. C'est toute la question. C'est-à-dire que quand tu fais cette traduction-là, tu as un système qui est irréversible et tu as un système qui est réversible et tu montres qu'ils sont absolument équivalents. Et tu montres qu'ils sont équivalents. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a absolument équivalent ah. Tu vois, et dans cette histoire, il n'y a pas d'absolument équivalent. Parce qu'après, quel type d'équivalence Donc, il faut faire attention. Ils montrent qu'ils sont équivalents. Mais quelle manière tu, tu vois, équivalence, ça a sens. C'est très faible. Être équivalent, ça ne dit pas grand-chose. Donc, il faut vraiment préciser quel type d'équivalence. Bien sûr, bien sûr, c'est toujours possible. Mais il faut, je crois, que c'est une bonne leçon pour philosophe pour ne pas dire équivalence juste de manière gratuite, tu sais, parce qu'il faut préciser qu'est-ce que c'est cette équivalence. C'est ce qu'a montré Hugo tout à l'heure. C'est-à-dire qu'il a montré que la logique linéaire qui est fondée exactement sur la même idée d'irréversibilité, de temporalité des calculs. Okay. Elle, elle a, un, une, elle a une, une simulation à l'intérieur de la logique classique okay, qui permet de faire tout ce qu'elle peut faire. Donc, la logique intuitionniste aussi permet de faire tout ce qu'elle peut faire et réciproquement. Bon, hein, c'est, c'est, c'est une traduction qui bon, permet ça, de... ça, je parle pour couvrir des c'est, ce a, c'est ce qu'il a mentionné, tu vois. Et, et c'est le même problème avec les différents euh, types de modalités, c'est-à-dire tu peux introduire des logiques modales et puis faire des, tu vois, montrer que tu peux les simuler dans des logiques qui ne sont pas modales. Et donc c'est pour ça que je pose la question, parce que c'est intéressant, tu vois, ça, ça nous oblige à nous demander quels sont les aspects qui sont de l'ordre de la, de la terminologie et quels sont les aspects qui sont structurels, c'est-à-dire que Vraiment, ils sont... Moi, c'est une question, hein. c'est une question ouverte, mais je trouve que c'est ouais, ouais, ouais. Mais au moins, dans la c'est clair que cette condition de réversibilité du chemin, ça euh, euh, fondamental dans le sens que si tu sais faire votre géométrie sans cette condition, donc c'est complètement votre géométrie. Mmh. Ce n'est pas que c'est trivial, ce n'est pas du tout. Donc, ça, 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 après, tu peux peut-être trouver quelques foncteurs, je ne sais pas, quelques types d'équivalence, mais, mais il y a les phénomènes qui n'apparaissent pas du tout. Aussi, il montre les liens avec la géométrie non commutative, en fait, euh, Grandis. Euh, donc, c'est, c'est tout nouveau, et c'est riche comme, ouais. mathématiquement. Et je... Non, non, ça répond à la question, si tu veux, mais là, c'est à Paris. C'est-à-dire qu'on se dit qu'il ouais. est possible qu'il y ait une autre géométrie qui serait très féconde. Mais, euh, mais tu vois, pour que ce pari soit gagnant, il faut que d'une manière ou d'une autre, on puisse la relier à la géométrie existante. Que, sinon, on aura juste deux trucs qui coexistent, qui sont complètement ouais. différents. Mais bien sûr. Et ça va nous embêter, ça. On n'a pas trop envie. Non, bien, ça, bien sûr, bien sûr. Ça, ça, ça. Mais c'est pour ça que je posais des questions. Si mais mais je crois qu'il y a aussi, si tu veux, question de principe. Parce que bien sûr, c'est important euh, techniquement, mais est-ce qu'on a... Parce que c'est une décision qui paraît vraiment technique. Si on... Euh, vraiment... C'est manière de penser de logique. Hein. Si on dit comme euh, dogme... Euh, Logique, euh, ce n'est pas du tout quelque chose lié euh, au espace, dans la géométrie, ça doit être autrement euh, confrégué. Et, et donc, euh, tu ignores tout ça, tu dis, euh, ce n'est pas du tout une entité, euh, tu vois, ou autrement. Donc, donc je, je comprends, bien sûr. Bien sûr, bien, bien sûr il faut lier toujours, c'est sûr. Parce que sinon, tu peux pas. Tu peux, dois expliquer le passé de cette nouvelle perspective, même si tu dis que c'était tout erroné. Je pense erroné. Que tu peux faire le parallèle avec la logique linéaire, parce que tout ce que tu dis, c'était vraiment le discours de la logique linéaire. Mais il faut, il faut, je n'ai pas, pas regardé, je, je, je connais un petit peu la logique linéaire. J'ai, j'ai suivi, euh, tu te rappelles, c'était à l'ENS, euh, le semestre de Jean-Yves Girard. Ce n'est pas du tout technique, il parlait philosophie, et ça donnait tellement d'excitation, mais tu, tu sors et tu ne sais rien. Maybe we can we have to take some minutes, we can maybe have our questions. Of course. If there are questions. Yeah. Are there questions from uh, uh. your answer about the G room? Yeah, there is question from Naimi. Uh Ah, it's name. Uh, Naimi says that because uh Naimi she's a student of Martin Love. Um, uh, 
wants to clarify when something is a judgment. Okay, it goes for judgment. G goes for judgment. Okay. In my case, I still have the same question I had at the beginning. I mean, I don't understand why. I mean, the, we don't have to go to linear logic, no? The idea of a transformation is the fundamental notion of category theory. And we know that equality... So the, the, David, there is no sound for them. It, it's not me, it's you. No, no, it's what? Well. We can hear. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. So we are not putting into question the notion of identity. We are just saying, well, the most general notion of a transformation is a non-reversible transformation. And reversible transformations are just a particular case. So this is not a way of reconceptualizing identity. It's just an extension to the most general case in which we have transformations, which is the basic fact in category theory. So I don't understand the, the and, and here we are just trying to extend the syntactic language of hot to infinity categories and not just to infinity group. Or it, yeah, yeah. That, so there is no a radical departure from what we know uh, that, from category theory, in which morphism is non-reversible in general. We don't have to go to linear logic or to I don't know, it's basic fact of category theory. We are passing from the isomorphism to the general ohms. And general ohms are so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but but no, if you like it's a technical, but kind of technical which I think should also has kind of philosophical aspect in it, uh, but but technically it just does work easily. Actually, what uh, Page North tried to do is exactly what? as you say, yeah. right? So she introduces modality, and if you say it doesn't give you, for example, this uh, general semantic in uh, inf inf, just in yeah. inf one, uh, and the. Uh, Okay, of course, you, you can have this idea in mind. I want to keep, uh, to make these extensions, you say, conservative, keep everything I had before. But it's it's not easy. It's simply, if you try to do that, but I think there are many situations in mathematics like that, right? You want to generalize something, but after all, it uh, kind of forces you to revise what you want to generalize. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's kind of kind of Hegel. It's a, it's a very very general situation, and and here it's certainly the case. Mm -hmm. And because uh, how to introduce this invertible type? No, already Martin Love, of course, has nothing similar right in his mind. He, he didn't think about geometry. Then it it came as a kind of. Uh, uh, Cador, <laughs> the idea that it's actually profoundly linked to homotopy theory, right? But uh, already, you know, what is also different, of course, that that's a new kind of geometry is also new. Uh, so you don't have behind already this uh, well-developed theory and models and everything. And uh, so it's, I don't. I don't know. Of course, you should better speak to people who really contribute to that. But but I perceive it's really kind of exploring new territory, and both in geometry and type theory. So it's not only in type theory, of course. It's just one. I'm not saying that this is not a contribution. I'm just saying that the idea of a non-reversible transformation is the most basic mathematical concept in if we know category theory. So yeah. it's not a, I mean, we are not uh, making a big jump to another of universe course. in which we introduce time in logic or phrasing it like this makes it look like something very weird, which in fact it's, it's not but, the but, case. But still too often I say, uh, I think we simply don't make all consequences because we kind of recognize what is, as you say, right? It's not inversible, but uh, still we kind of keep uh, ideas that things should be, I don't know, equivalent after all or yeah. something. Right, so we introduce this uh, reversibility kind of um, artificially rather than pushing this non-reverse. <laughs> Maybe we can talk more. Yeah. Uh, may I? Yeah. So uh, to go back um, at the end of your slide with the zero shift. Mm. So your solution is basically to uh, abandon symmetry. Yes. 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 So we have like. Uh, uh, so, can you show the slide? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the point is, is very simple. Uh, so, uh, okay, that's all. Yeah, so we have that S0 is identical to S1, S0 is identical to S2. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we have transitivity, but we yeah. we we uh, we don't get from uh, we don't get S one is identical to S two right, right. because we can, we don't have C and you also right. don't get from S one to S zero. Yeah, that that was my point, mm -hmm. um, which I found quite difficult to. So S zero is identical to S one, but not S one is not identical to S zero. So yeah, the point is if I want to model like uh, identity through time. So if I want to say when I was five, yeah, it seems I want to say I am in certain sense identical to the 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 child that was five. Yeah, yeah I was thinking about that example, but I think that this is not symmetric, right? But today I may say, okay, I am the same person yeah. that that boy, you know, fifty years ago. Uh, that's good, but how I can really inverse it? So. For example, imagine I bought that uh, boy then, and I would say, look, you are the same as that guy in the future who probably is not going to be there, right? <laughs> to survive anything, yeah. right? So, no, at least, uh, so linguistically, okay, it's kind of allowed, right? Mm -hmm. to, to go both ways, but even linguistically, I think uh, there is kind of different value. It's it's not quite, how uh, uh, say, free to to inverse it mm. it's uh, because time of one life like personal identity just goes one way does go the other way you know yeah, that's it's, very it's, basic fact about you know i mean looking at the zero shift there uh -huh. it's, and if we think of like uh me 10 years ago it seems that myself 10 years ago is identical to myself today, but I'm not identical. To yeah, yeah. No, you may say of course, because okay. ten years ago you did not know you did not exist in the future, right? Yeah, yeah. That's completely no. Whatever theory you have about these issues, but uh, past and future, at least, kind of uh, phenomenological, is not the same, right? Physicists may say it's all illusion, whatever, but but of course it's not the same. It, it yeah. has a direction. And at least here we have kind of formalisms that just start with that, right? That direction is not something added on the top of, you know, kind of invertible stuff, but we, we just start with that notion of directed thought. Actually, this Tizel ship is interesting because in the Plutarch, right? Uh, actually, what Plutarch says about that uh, uh, suggests that these morphisms are not of the same category because you have different uh, types of processes, mm -hmm. right, for P1 and P2. So one thing, you replace the stuff and then you could... So you kind of different principles of identity, so rather probably more serious analysis would put it in different categories or something. <laughs> yeah, Arnold wanted... Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a comment on that because, you know, in uh, temporal model logic, for example, uh, I think the most common version is when the this uh, time tree branches in the future, right? And in that sense, we get uh, asymmetry and this directedness, as you say. But I, uh, I also know that there are versions, for example, of uh, temporal model logic where this branching goes not only in the future, but in the past. And in that sense, for example, the modality, uh, the, like, uh, the directedness of it, it, it uh, again becomes, it becomes symmetrical. And um, I wonder what uh, could be uh, like philosophical uh, implications of that also. No, look, I... Of course, it's it's all depends. You may construct because these models they are made up by hand, right? They they don't come from whatever source. Either if you imagine time as branching, you you do this model, right? It, there is no kind of uh, objective reason to do that or not to do that. But what is interesting about that formalism that you have this notion of uh, directed is a primitive notion of, say, relation. So by the way, in standard theory, for example, right, you have a uh, notion of ordered pair, which in a sense is easier than unordered pair. So if you think about pairs, it's not like you have a set with a structure, right? It's a, it comes as a primitive. So in that sense, something similar we have here, 
Uh, no, of course, by by itself, by itself, uh, that just a uh, masterpiece of mathematics, right? However, since we may argue category theory is a kind of very general language in mathematics, if we also believe that you know, kind of mathematic generally, not of course in particular instance, but kind of has something objective about it as a serving as basis for say science, for physics and stuff. Uh, right, then we say that is a kind of right uh, notion of, uh, uh, this is kind of right logic that we just uh, obtain as a piece of this, not, uh, uh, subjectively, as Hegel would say, just thinking about you know our kind of linguistic preferences. <laughs> okay, we should uh, stop if you want to go for our lunch. So <laughs> again, and uh, yeah. so we will see at two this afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon.